Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Monday, January, Tuesday, January 17th. We had Monday off. Uh, glad you all could uh, could join. And let me see how many are, we got a nice group of uh, participants so far. Um, <laughs> what, what a runaround I had this morning. Um, about half an hour ago, uh, the internet decided to go down for no good reason. The weather is perfectly nice. Uh, usually our internet goes down when we have storms. So uh, not quite sure what happened. Could be a car accident, somebody running into a pole or who knows. But anyways, the internet went down. So um, uh, resourceful me, I scrambled to uh, put together a, uh, a broadcasting system with my uh, laptop. And I have a, uh, this is a pretty cool uh, device here uh, from uh, Verizon. It's called uh, M106. And uh, it's pretty powerful. So, so far, so good. Don't want to jinx it. Um, and then uh, I had a, another camera. So put it all together. And here we are. And I'm glad you could, uh, you could join. Um, what can we talk about? Uh, we could talk about football. We're getting uh, closer to the Super Bowl. And uh, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the Giants, uh, mostly because my wife is a big fan of the Giants. So uh, we had a, a good weekend with uh, the Giants uh, making some progress here towards the Super Bowl. I asked her whether she thinks she, they have a chance, and she thinks that they have some chance. She did win her, uh, uh, you, you know, how they, they play those fantasy uh, football games. Uh, well, uh, she's she joined together with family members, and uh, she uh, she won. She's number one, so she knows her stuff. Um, so let's see, uh, talking about knowing their stuff, let's uh, focus on our stuff, uh, which is uh, all about the market. Uh, I uh, uh, I got the chart collection in, in front of us now, so let's uh, let's go look at it. Uh, basically, uh, a couple of things that I addressed in the morning uh, briefing. One of them, the first story I reviewed, um, all the um, pessimism uh, that's out there. Uh, it seemed at the end of the year, maybe even at the very beginning of the year, uh, the uh, strategists, uh, a lot of them. We're talking about um, that the bear market isn't over, that uh, we're going to make a, a new low or at least retest the October low, and uh, that uh, it's going to be a lousy market in the first half of the year. And that's because uh, presumably earnings are going to be terrible and uh, the market will discount that uh, and also discount a recession in the second half of the year, uh, which uh, then would set us up for a rebound in the market in the second half of the year. Why? because the market uh, by then would have discounted the recession in the second half of uh, this year, and then would have gone on to start anticipating a recovery in 2024. Very plausible, reasonable uh, scenario, certainly grounds for, for pessimism. Um, uh, but uh, it's, it seems to me it's uh, became a pretty conventional wisdom pretty, pretty quickly here. The, pro the problem with trying to be a contrarian here is the conventional wisdom, the consensus, changes so rapidly here. Uh, and I think as the market has uh, done fairly well so far this year, it's just the start of the year, uh, the perception is uh, maybe we got it backwards. Maybe it's gonna be a decent first half of the year and a lousy second half of the year. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna be an okay year uh, all in all, not guaranteeing you or promising you there won't be volatility. I think uh, now we're all st uh, starting to focus on the debt ceiling uh, issue because uh, the debt ceiling has been hit. And Janet Yellen said that you can uh, um, move around some cash uh, until the early summer, uh, but we're gonna have to have a, uh, an agreement on the, on the debt ceiling. And um, we don't really know uh, the extent to which the Republicans have tied themselves up with some agreements uh, so that the Speaker of the House uh, uh, could, uh, McCarthy could, uh, uh, could win uh, the vote. Uh, but uh, it's conceivable that uh, um, the Republicans uh, may have some uh, significant internal dissension, which may be hard, make it harder to get a debt ceiling uh, ap approval. Then again, the Democrats could unite with some uh, moderate Republicans and come up uh, with uh, some uh, agreement on the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling basically uh, just uh, signs off on the debt that has already been accumulated. It's not as though... Uh, it's going to stop anything uh, from, from happening, but it, it could shut down the government. I mean, it could stop things for, for a short period of time. Um, 
but all in all, uh, I think this is another one of those political dramas uh, that uh, Washington likes to uh, play out. I think the market is going to kind of uh, look back at 2011 and say we've seen this before and uh, uh, the, there will there'll be a deal. And by the way, if there is no deal, the markets uh, could very well react very badly to it in very short order and then kind of kind of force the issue, force the politicians to uh, uh, do a deal. So one way or the other, I think there will be a deal. Uh, but I'm uh, again uh, in the uh, soft landing camp. I don't see a recession uh, this year. Uh, I'm not telling you it's impossible, quite the contrary. As you know, we've been talking about 60% probability of a soft landing and 40% uh, uh, of, uh, of a hard landing. And uh, it's conceivable we'll have no landing, uh, which I, I will kind of throw into the soft landing uh, probability, uh, in which case the economy will continue to grow. It'll prove itself to be resilient to the backup in interest rates we've had so far. We'll find that inflation, in fact, uh, moderates uh, down to three to 4% uh, by uh, the end of the year. Fed is targeting to getting back to 2% in 2025. So. Uh, we'd be going in the right direction, and uh, uh, the Fed could take some uh, comfort from that. Uh, but uh, as we all know, the fixed income markets are uh, projecting, predicting, and anticipating that the Fed is getting pretty close to the terminal rate. Uh, it might be uh, 5%, five percent, five and a quarter percent. But the two years are already telling us that's not going to hold, and we're going to go back down closer to four and a half, four and a quarter percent. So that's where the fixed income markets seem to be uh, inclined at, at this point. Let me just get my water here. Those are my three screens that you I typically broadcast from. If you're in, interested that, uh, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, you probably can't see it, but that uh, uh, picture up there is uh, actually a uh, picture that uh, you can go see in West Point uh, showing uh, the uh, D-Day landing of paratroopers in, uh, in France. And uh, that was the, uh, uh, the picture that was used to uh, scale up for the mural that's in, uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, academy. Uh, so um, let's go back here to uh, what we're talking about. So clearly, inflation remains a, a, an issue. Let's talk about inflation. Uh, and uh, let's talk first about some of the points that uh, the pessimists uh, continue to be concerned about. Uh, among the pessimists, the most vocal pessimists, uh, have been some of the uh, bank CEOs, particularly Jamie Dimon. And Jamie Dimon has been warning that um, a, a hurricane is coming. And recently he's kind of backed off and said, well, you know, that's kind of the worst case uh, scenario. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the uh, JP Morgan has uh, stashed away some money for um, non performing loans. Uh, so has Wells, uh, so has Citi. Um, and, uh, so, and Bank of America, of course. Uh, altogether, they've uh, increased their allowances for non-performing loans by $4 billion. That sounds like a lot of money, and it certainly sounds like uh, it shows that they're concerned, but it's actually a pretty trivial amount of money. And you can uh, see in this uh, first, first chart uh, that uh, so far, it's not as though the banks are panicking to uh, accumulate uh, reserves for loans. And so what this chart shows, let me see if I got my arrow here. Uh, you, you can see that uh, th this is a quarterly data for uh, all financial institutions that comes out from the uh, FDIC. So it's kind of delayed. Uh, but on a weekly basis, this is uh, a pretty well-kept secret, so don't, uh, don't tell anybody. Uh, but uh, in the uh, weekly release on commercial bank uh, balance sheets, there's actually an item on, on allowance for losses. So we can actually track uh, both the large banks, the small banks, and all banks. And so uh, we calculate that in the fourth quarter of, um, uh, of last year that the banks uh, set aside, the large banks set aside $8 billion. And so we already know that about $4 billion of that came from uh, for the, the biggest banks. Uh, but all in all, it certainly it doesn't look as though the banks are as uh, panicked about uh, the mild recession that they, they've been talking about of late. Uh, meanwhile, uh, there's no signs of a recession in what's going on with their loan portfolio and uh, revolving credit. CNI loans, uh, basically, they're all which was the uh, you know let's cash in our lines of credit because of the pandemic uh, 
scare, but uh, not scare, but I mean, it, the pandemic was very real. Uh, but uh, then the Fed came in and provided liquidity. And so they were able to, uh, uh, the, the borrowers uh, paid, paid back their lines of credit and they did it partly of going to, going to the uh, bond market and borrowing a lot of money. So they, uh, I think it was like $1.5 trillion was borrowed by non-financial corporations uh, in the two years of the pandemic. Uh, and most of the, I mean, all of that at record low interest rates. Uh, so, you know, there's all this talk about uh, there's no liquidity, the Fed's doing QT. There's an enormous amount of liquidity still in the system. I know people have been worrying about M2, but M2 is still about one to one and a half trillion dollars above its pre-pandemic uh, up, upward trend. So I think there's still plenty of liquidity in the system. And we see it in the stock market on a regular basis. Uh, whenever everybody feels a little bit bullish, the market goes up a lot. And so suddenly there's liquidity. And then the Fed uh, officials say something and the market goes down. Uh, well, we're back. Uh, Last I looked above the 200-day moving average, uh, this is the fourth time that uh, we've tested that 200-day that 200-day moving average. Um, let's see now if any Fed officials in the next three days before the blackout period say anything that managed to uh, squash this uh, uh, recent rally. I again, I think the market bottomed on October 12th. Uh, I think uh, the bear market's over. Um, that doesn't mean that we're in a straight-up bull market. Uh, as we know, valuation uh, multiples aren't exactly dirt cheap in a bear market. Uh, typically, they get down to eight to 10. Uh, now we're dealing with 15 to 17. Uh, so things aren't dirt cheap, but small cap, mid cap are uh, quite cheap. Uh, so when that's where we're starting to see some uh, outperformance, and we're also starting to see some outperformance in the broader market where valuation multiples aren't as stretched as they are on a uh, market cap weighted basis for the S&P 500. Uh, particularly with the mega cap eight, which are still uh, relatively expensive. So back to the anxiety uh, that we've seen here. Um, uh, consumers, um, I, I remember there was one professor in uh, uh, Dartmouth uh, who got a lot of uh, press a couple uh, about a year ago in, uh, in Bloomberg and other places saying that uh, we're heading towards a recession. And so he was one of the early uh, promoters of the idea that a recession is coming. And he based it on the drop in consumer confidence. He actually based it on this number, the Consumer Sentiment Index. And you guys had a, a, a big run, and, and that one of the uh, components of leading indicators. And it does suggest the consumers are going to uh, cut back on their spending. But that didn't happen. Now, there's excess uh, savings that kept the consumer spending. Uh, you know, you know how we are, we Americans. Uh, when we're uh, happy, we spend money. When we're depressed, we spend, spend even more money if uh, we can have access to it. And so the excess savings helped. So did uh, uh, borrowing on uh, credit cards. But hey, uh, payroll employment's been real strong and uh, wages have kept up with prices. That's uh, wage, real wages have stagnated, but they haven't uh, declined. And now we're starting to see that wages may actually be increasing uh, faster than prices. Uh, again, uh, these are a couple of charts showing the extent to which economists are uh, extremely pessimistic. And uh, this chart here shows that uh, something like, uh, what is it, 44% uh, of them uh, are expecting um, a decline in real GDP. And that's uh, all time record high for the survey that goes back to 1968. Um, strategists, uh, we talked about strategists and uh, kind of what, what I, my, my sense of the consensus is, uh, but um, uh, there's a few, I guess, that are so pessimistic about the outlook for 2023 that are, they're thinking that uh, the um, this year could be the second down year for the S&P 500. Uh, if you look at this chart, there've been uh, four instances where we've had back-to-back -back, uh, uh, down years. And uh, in all four of them, the second year down year was worse than the first year. Kind of doubt that's going to happen. Kind of doubt that this is going to be a, a down year. One of the reasons for that from a purely technical uh, perspective is, uh, I don't know why, but uh, midterm uh, midterms elections tend to be followed by bull markets. 
or, or at least the solid double digit gains in the market. So you can look at that in the, in the morning briefing. Uh, let me uh, uh, run through the uh, latest uh, news on the inflation and then we'll do some Q and A. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we have a nice turnout today. So I appreciate that. And I hope this is coming through loud and clear because I did have to scramble in the in about a half an hour before this all started uh, to deal with an internet problem by using a, a, uh, a new fancy uh, router I have, um, I should say MiFi that I have, and so far I shouldn't jinx it, but it's working pretty good. I was gonna knock on wood here, but the router, the, the, the modem is on the same table. I don't wanna jostle it. So um, the whole issue of transitory versus persistent has been resolved, hasn't it? The inflation is persistent, we all know that. Uh, at the end of, uh, well, last year, the talk was that inflation is transitory. Um, I was talking that talk, others were talking that talk. I think I gave up on it a little sooner than the Fed did and realized there was more persistence in it. I did argue that inflation was basically being led by consumer durable goods. And that now with the Russian uh, invasion of the Ukraine, we were looking at food and energy prices, non-durable goods uh, price inflation. Uh, but I, I really viewed that that was likely to be transitory. And I think that's playing out pretty well. And I did say that uh, services uh, would be uh, uh, more persistent, mostly because of the rent. So I think I basically got it right, but the markets, uh, but it, it didn't play out uh, the way I thought in the markets because the markets took the much more pessimistic view. And of course, the other thing that happened is the Fed went from a transitory and, you know, uh, we're gonna raise rates, but not by much to suddenly uh, the Fed realizing that they were way behind the inflation curve and then uh, having to turn uh, more hawkish increasingly to establish their credibility. Um, so let's look at uh, figure nine over here. And you can see that consumer goods, which includes durables and non-durable goods, uh, that certainly looks like a peak, uh, but it still uh, looks like it's quite elevated when you look at the CPI, which is the December data, PCED is still November data, but that's not too bad, 4.8%. Again, I'm thinking we're going to see overall inflation down to three to four percent. So I need that to keep coming down because services inflation isn't going to be as accommodating uh, as as goods are in the uh, next few months. Uh, but look at durable goods. I think I got that right. I did uh, believe that uh, that was an uh, an aberration related to the pandemic. Look, I, I think we have to recognize that, the, as we all do, that the pandemic really distorted everything. And uh, there's still a lot of stuff that's being pandemic, but we're getting closer and closer to something more normal, more like something that we had uh, before the pandemic, maybe even before that. Uh, I kind of view the environment from 2009 to 2021 as the new normal. Uh, that's uh, That was a name that uh, uh, Bill Gross and others gave to uh, that environment, uh, and it uh, was unconventional, easy monetary policies. And then the pandemic hit, and uh, the the new normal went went on steroids with the ultra easy monetary policy. Uh, that set the stage for that uh, big surge in inflation, uh, which now is moderating. I think the old normal is making a comeback here. The old normals where the economy grows at a reasonable pace, inflation. Uh, uh, remains uh, relatively low, but it's not 2%. Maybe it's above that uh, for for a year or two. And interest rates are 3 to 4%. Uh, I hope we don't go back to zero interest rates. Um, maybe for those who bought bonds thinking we're going to go there, I'll, uh, so I, I just don't think that's going to happen. So here we are with uh, the CPI at minus 0.1%. You'll notice that it's, as I pointed out before, it's got a history of being uh, negative on a year-over-year -year basis deflation. And there's no particular reason why that won't uh, uh, occur this year and, and next year and beyond that. Um, consumer non-durable goods, uh, that's mostly food and energy. And again, we've made some progress there. The energy has uh, come down, especially uh, quickly. Food just seems to be peaking now. Uh, but if food prices just go nowhere, just sideways, which is kind of what I'm expecting, that'll help to bring inflation down. And uh, energy is energy, it's, uh, it's volatile. 
but uh, certainly uh, there seems to be plenty of natural gas these days as we've seen prices plunge in Europe and the United States. Um, let's move on quickly here, or more quickly. Uh, consumer price index, CPI uh, goods, uh, CPI, just focusing on CPI and no, no PCD in this chart. And you can see that X food and energy were down to 2.1% for goods. So we're, we're certainly heading in the right direction. Uh, where we're not heading in the right direction is in uh, the uh, services area. And as uh, you're all aware, uh, Fed Chair Powell gave a speech on November 30th at the Brookings Institution and said, look, the Fed's uh, focusing on three areas of inflation uh, where they said they're looking at, uh, at goods uh, and they're looking at core inflation. So they're uh, not uh, putting that much weight on food and energy. Uh, and when they're looking at core inflation, they're looking at uh, goods prices, uh, but they're also looking at uh, housing related prices, which they concede uh, are not properly measured in the CPI. They know that uh, new lease inflation uh, for rentals is coming down substantially more than they're seeing in the CPI. And they realize that that's actually a leading indicator for what's going to happen in the CPI. Uh, but their uh, hangup is with uh, the uh, core services excluding housing. And that's what you can see here. And, and Powell said it's been kind of stuck here at 4.3%. Um, I think it's peaked. I think it's going lower. Um, uh, Powell thinks it's uh, largely wage driven. I think it's still driven by supply and demand in the uh, for these kind of services. Uh, I think a lot of the services just opened over the past year. And so we had kind of a surge of demand. And I think as that calms down, those those prices will moderate. Um, I'm trying to follow that with the CPI because that's the consumption deflator that the Fed staff put together. And the CPI, there's some correlation. It's not great. Uh, and it's certainly not encouraging. This is CPI core services, uh, le less shelter. Um, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think the big item there actually is transportation services. It's not that I think that. I know, I know that because uh, we know medical care and, uh, services uh, is higher in the CPI than in the deflator. Um, but here's the transportation uh, issue. As you can see, it's up 14.6%. Uh, 14 14 uh, sorry, yeah, 14.6%. And I think that'll moderate along with uh, energy prices and as wage inflation and transportation starts to, to, to simmer down. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here I wanna cover. Uh, the rest you can kind of look at yourself. This is the rent, uh, this is through December, we have rent uh, for new leases down to 3.9%. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Let's uh, open it up for uh, Q&A here. Let's see what we got. If you wanna go ahead and uh, send some questions along. Um, let me see if we've got anything so far. Yeah, let me, put the whistle. Okay, Ben, uh, hi, how does the economy escape a recession after 5% uh, once all done of Fed hikes in the cycle, which is the most we've had since 1980? Thanks. It's a good question. It's a relevant question, and it certainly is a, a, a credible position to take uh, for those uh, who believe that uh, there's no way around a recession. It's already locked in. Uh, part of the thesis uh, of, of all this is that uh, Monetary policy operates with a long and variable lag. Uh, that's not the case with housing. Housing uh, has fallen into a very severe recession. Uh, we're seeing some weakness in the auto uh, sector as uh, auto loans have become uh, more expensive. Uh, so we are we have seen that uh, the impact on the economy from high interest rates on the interest rate sensitive sectors has uh, already worked. Uh, but um, the consumer continues to spend. Uh, you would think that if they're spending less on uh, you know, moving to a new house and refurbishing it, uh, they seem to be spending uh, a little bit more on refurbishing the houses they're, they're in. Um, but meanwhile, they continue to spend. And as we know, they've uh, pivoted from spending on goods to spending on services. Meanwhile, I've been pointing out that some of the capital spending indicators uh, look remarkably resilient uh, as well. And maybe that has to do with onshoring 
uh, has to do with a lot of fiscal stimulus uh, for, in for infrastructure, state and local governments. But, you know, there's still a tremendous amount of cash <clears throat> that people are sitting on from the uh, pa pandemic. And it's not just consumers, it's also state and local governments. Uh, so I think, um, I think the economy is going to uh, skirt a, uh, a hard landing, and um, but it's reasonable to uh, can be concerned, if not to believe, that um, this backup in the Fed funds rate, basically from zero, zero to five percent, must cause a recession. That's not my point of view. So far, uh, so good in terms of the uh, indicators we've seen. Uh, the coincident indicators support uh, my view. The leading indicators are saying we're going to have a recession coming right up here in February, March, or April. So I guess maybe we we're not going to have to wait very long to uh, prove that I'm wrong. If we don't have a recession in, in the next few months, um, that won't prove me right uh, because uh, there will obviously be still concerns that it's going to happen in the second half of the year. <laughs> if it doesn't happen in the second half of the year, I guess the pessimists will figure out a way for us to worry about it in 2024. I mean, let's not forget there was a lot of pessimism about 2022 in terms of recession. Uh, when neg real GDP turned negative in the first two quarters of the year, uh, quite a few declared that, see, that's the beginning of the recession. And then uh, it looked like we were going to have a, a landing of some sort. And then in the second half, there was no landing whatsoever. The economy kind of uh, re regained its uh, altitude. Let's see. Uh, let me scroll down here. I'm working on my laptop. For those of you who tuned in late, I had an internet problem, so I had to scramble to do this on the laptop and with a MiFi, and so far it's working. Um, let's see, what are your thoughts on the new CPI calculation? How will it impact going forward? We're still working on it, uh, thinking about it. Don't really have a, a, a good final uh, conclusion for you, so uh, let me, uh, let, let, I'll, do, I'll do that in writing. Uh, within the next uh, few weeks. Uh, Doug, if inflation is persistent, why are short tips break even so low? Um, it's a good question. Um, look, uh, I, I think, as I said, I think there's still, what's going on in the fixed income market suggests that there really still is a lot of liquidity uh, from the pandemic. Uh, the, the, the weakness in M2 uh, uh, clearly has not uh, had any uh, real impact on these markets. Um, the financial markets, uh, the fixed income markets, uh, seem to be pretty relaxed about inflation coming down. And, um, you know, the old adage, don't fight the Fed. Well, maybe uh, we also have to consider here, don't fight the yield curve, don't fight the uh, uh, two-year uh, yield, don't fight the 10-year. The they're, they're all kind of, I, I guess, if you're in the recession camp, you can say that, you know, they're signaling a recession. If you're in my camp, uh, you, you know, you're saying, well, Economic growth could, could slow, but the big story is inflation comes down. Uh, what are your thoughts on the international markets? I'll, I, in, a, in a couple of words, I like them. Um, uh, you know, uh, I and everybody else was worrying about a recession in Europe uh, if it was going to be uh, another uh, cold winter, which is what they get in the winters. Instead, it was a remarkably warm winter so far, knock on wood. Uh, they, uh, their storage is up to 80, 90%, depending on the country for natural gas. So uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be an energy shortage related recession in, uh, in Europe. Uh, the ECB is raising interest rates and maybe that'll uh, create some recessionary issues. But uh, Europe also is getting another uh, interesting benefit, and that is uh, China. Uh, China is opening up. Is important because Europe gets a, a, does a lot of business with China, and that uh, could be a, a stimulative uh, factor as well. So the global economy, between my view on the U.S. and uh, I think the increasingly consensus view that uh, Europe and China are looking better, uh, certainly runs contrary to uh, the World Bank's recent uh, warnings that a global recession is coming. Uh, but that being the case. Uh, if, uh, if in fact things are looking better rather than worse uh, on, a, on a global basis, uh, I, I think that does argue for uh, uh, going global more so than we have in the past, simply because evaluation multiples are real cheap in the rest of the world, whereas the US is still relatively expensive. Um, 
So I have no problems with uh, giving more weight uh, to Europe, uh, to uh, emerging markets. I'm philosophically against investing in China, but we don't have to get into that. Um, well, lots of thoughts, uh, thoughts on crypto. Um, same old, same old uh, in terms of my thinking. Uh, uh, Bitcoin, um, in my mind, is uh, really uh, just um, uh, digital tulips. Uh, the tulip mania of, uh, in Holland uh, was a mania that uh, uh, was very localized in one location, uh, basically Amsterdam. Uh, maybe the rest of Holland participated. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, the, 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 the mania occurred uh, during daylight. At night, they all went to sleep and presumably they weren't trading. Uh, this time, we've got uh, Bitcoin trading uh, on a global basis, 24 by 7. And um, I, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin and the other currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, they certainly have to be concerned about government regulation. And I think at some point here, the governments are going to basically ban them one way or the other or regulate them uh, severely, uh, because I think they're going to, uh, the U.S. is going to come up with bit dollars. And I think uh, the ECB is going to come up with bit euros and, and so on. Uh, so money is a very powerful economic force, and I uh, can't imagine that the central banks are just going to uh, let um, the, the private markets uh, take it over. And uh, as a result of uh, some of the recent shenanigans, the, uh, they're certainly going to regulate these markets a, a lot more tightly. And as a uh, store of value, I mean, it's a trading vehicle. Let's, let's face it, I mean, up 20%. In, uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, it's great if you caught that trade. Uh, but uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not too good at uh, you know uh, throwing knives up in the air and uh, and, and catching them. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, look, uh, thanks for for tuning in. Glad this worked out on my laptop. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.